Oh, and the reason we're not actually seeing anything right now, press OK, close it, OK, is in our terrain texture sets for Zill, the lighting is set to the old one. So uh, let's set it to Zill too. It's using its, like, in within the game, I mean, within the editor name. So you have to know that Zill 2 means uh, forest. If you press Control D, you can see the, the actual editor name, and it's Zill 2, so Control D to go back. Um, I don't know why they did that. It didn't used to be like that, but... Anyways, now we can see our lighting's changed a bit, so let's go back to the forest, double-click time, time of day of info array, and then modify the light. And now let's go... Uh, where are we going to go? Let's colorize it a bit more. And let's turn down the saturation. There we go. So now this one's going to be kind of like a desaturated, uh, I don't know, dark foresty thing. It's not really a forest. I didn't really put that many trees. I probably should have put more, but... Whatever, that's pretty cool. And um, so let's leave it at that. And let's save, just to be safe. Uh, let's call this uh, Test Voting. That was a pretty bad name, but uh, that's good enough. Uh, back to the data editor now. Um, so let's go to, so what we're gonna do right now is make the uh, zergling that drops creep behind it, like a creep trail, kind of a creepy thing. Uh, so let's go to footprints first and find footprint four by four um, creep source grown and then you double click layers and this is something I just found through like a lot of playing around in here because it's kind of confusing actually and now you can see this is what the creep would actually drop like so we want to change this to actually be uh, one by one and then go to set one and just check that set one no we don't Set 2 is important. Set 2 drops creep. And you could obviously change it if you wanted. So I'm going to actually go to set 2 and then click. And then placement check. Set 2, click. OK. And that actually fixes the shape too. OK. And for some reason, um, so you, you'd, I, did, I clicked on here under set 2. I did place, I clicked it. And then placement check, I did it. And then under pathing, for some reason, you just click this one, turn it on. I don't know why, and then it makes a nice thing here. Uh, anyways, so we got that. And I could probably rename this to uh, footprint one by one. And I didn't duplicate it, I just modified it because I was kind of lazy. But anyways, now we need to find creep source start. Okay, and let's actually just rename this to one by one. And then let's do the same thing here. So let's change this to one by one. Okay, placement apply. So set one doesn't do any creep, but set two does. So let's go to set two and make sure it's pressed. Set one. Okay, so set two is pressed, I believe. And uh, set two is there. And then pathing, you just press that. Press OK. And that's good. We're done with footprints pretty much now. So let's go to behaviors. Search for a creep. Make creep 2 by 2 overlord. Um, circling creep growth. Let's see. Um, I think I'm going to use this one. And uh, let's rename this to uh, where is it? Creep growth. Oops, Gorth, that's not a word. Creepy growth, why did I type creepy growth? Okay, creep growth small. And, uh, okay, that looks good. And you can always add a prefix like zergling dash, so it makes more sense, so it's more tailored to our map. Um, and you wanna set the, uh, let's see, this is good. Uh, this is good. This is all, see, it's all been modified because we just, instead of duplicating it, we just modified the base uh, spell. How big is this one? Oh, that's pretty big. Anyways, uh, make creep go small, whatever. Uh, la, 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 la. So, here's the important part delay. Because, uh, maybe like 15, because our zeroing moves pretty fast, um, and it's not just like a, because the ability we're modifying here was like used for creep tumor, I believe. And creep tumors don't move, but when you have a zergling bouncing around, you need to make this pretty fast. And the period is going to be 0 0.1. So it doesn't come off too late, and it it makes it very often, like every 0.1 seconds, which is definitely what you uh, what you want for this. 
So we got our Zergling creep growth small, and it modified the original one to be that too, which is just a weird effect of modifying instead of duplicating, but anyways, it doesn't matter. And now we can go to our Zergling unit, or not our Zergling unit, we can go to the game's uh, Zergling unit under Units here. Click on the Zergling, and then double click on the Behaviors, Behaviors Plus, add one, and then search, click Z, and then look, go down, there's Zergling, oops, Zergling Creep Growth Small, press OK. And now everything's good, except because the creep, the creep trail is so thin compared to regular creep, um, we need to actually go into Gameplay Data, get rid of that search, and then click on Default SC2 Gameplay Settings, and then change Creep Decay Time um, to 25, and creep blend time to 0.1 because if this is too long the zergling is going to move too fast and it's never going to catch on so this has to be pretty low and this has to be pretty long because the creep isn't in large areas and so it uh, we don't want it to dissipate too fast and that's pretty much it for uh, for making our little zergling um, hopefully everything works you never know uh, we'll find out later I guess when I test it and we can go straight into triggers and start doing the map voting So in the triggers now, um, let's get rid of these. I'm just going to leave this named as that. Um, and let's go new, right click new, uh, variable. So we're going to make some global variables right now to handle the voting. So we need a vote timer. So you have a certain amount of time to vote for. And let's make it a timer. Good. And let's copy paste and F2 to rename. And that's what I did earlier to rename. You could always right click and rename as well. Um, vote timer window. So the vote timers need a window to be displayed. And we need to be able to hide it later. So we need to make a global variable here. These are all your global variables. And in here is all your, uh, in here we'll do all our actions and we'll make some new triggers to do some more actions like determining voting and stuff. Anyways, so we got that. Copy paste, rename this. And now we need a map vote dialog. So a dialog is a box that will. Uh, We'll display all our buttons like vote, click vote map desert, click vote map uh, forest. And yeah, that's good. It's a dialog. Copy paste. And now we need map vote. I'd already didn't have to rewrite that all, but map vote dialogs, uh, dialog items. And this is just going to be a dialog item. And we need to make it, I don't know, size three is good for this because we only have two maps. But if you had like 10 maps, you'd need 10 buttons. So you'd have to make this like 10. So I'm just going to leave it at three. And then we need a map votes, and this is an integer. I press I, and then this is not an array. Actually, it is an array, size 3. And hold on, let me just do this and then I'll explain it. Previous player vote. And this is size 5, integer as well. Save it. Okay, so um, what's going to happen is when the player clicks the button, we're going to set their vote. We're gonna set their previous set their vote pre previous player vote. Um, so it's got five a size of five one one two three four for each player. Uh, you could probably make this four, but I'm just going five to be safe. And if you had like 15 players, you'd want to increase that obviously. So we track which what they voted for last, so that it doesn't uh, it doesn't keep adding if they keep clicking vote. And then here we keep track of how many well, how many votes each map has. So this will make sense when I go through the actual uh, voting trigger. Um, so back in here, uh, let's do a new action and let's timer, start a timer. And this is going to be our voting timer. So nice. It's right there. And we want this to be one shot. Yes. And it will expire in 20. Actually, let's do 15 and make it real time because you don't want somebody who's playing on slow to have to wait like 35 seconds if it's on game, if this was game time. Copy paste and now let's go hit V and then click set variable and set uh, vote timer to equal and this might be redundant but I do it anyway just to be safe click function last started timer um, because we did start it here as the timer but I just do this to be safe copy paste both of those below and now we want to change this one to hit T scroll down the timer we want to uh, where is it? Timer created timer window. Oh, I was already on it. 